I want to start off by giving infinite glory, honor, and praises, majesty, might, blessings, and thanksgiving unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Harukakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Also, peace and blessings unto the hopeful and faithful elect across the four winds, bringing out this truth in sincerity and in charity to the best of their ability. Shalom, Akim Shalom. And Shalom as well to you, few Akwa, who are listening. The, the title of my lesson today is Look to the Hills. I'm going to go right into it. Starting in Proverbs, Salakia. Starting in Psalms, the, 20, the 121st chapter. I'm going to read all the way down to the end. Bear with me, Baba Kasha. It says, a song of degrees. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from Yahweh, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Yasharala shall neither slumber nor sleep. Yahweh is thy keeper. Yahweh is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Yahweh shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Yahweh shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And this is what happens when you look to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help, who is Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai, which made heaven and earth. It says right here in verse 3 He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Never sleeping. Two, three o'clock in the morning, you've been up all day and you didn't went to work. you subject to get sleepy unless you, you're, you, you've taken something. You know? Other than that, you're human. Is basically what I'm saying. And Yahweh Yahweh Shai is not. Obviously, we know that because in verse 2, it says, My help cometh from Yahweh, which made heaven and earth. And no man that stands upon this earth made the heaven or the earth. Let's look at Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. The righteous are those who, can, who keep Yahweh while Yahweh Shah's laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability without wavering, who continue to keep their hand on the plow and not look back, looking back toward those things that were in your past. Going to the clubs, macking on females constantly, putting all those things which I mentioned plus more before Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Making sure that you keep the dietary law to the best of your ability. Making sure that you follow the Shabbat to the best of your ability. Not Christianity, not plantation Christianity, which says, the Shabbat is on Friday to Saturday sundown every week. That's not how it works. But looking unto the scriptures, reading, diligently searching. We want to look at Luke 21 and 28. And we're going to start off with the 26th verse. It says, Men's hearts fail in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 
And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. The same thing that you're doing when you look when you look to the hills from which come your help. The same hill that you look into from which comes your strength. And that hill that I'm speaking of is none other than Yahweh Yahweh Shai, who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly well above all others. Let's go now to Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 3. The 15th chapter and the third verse. It says, For to know thee is perfect righteousness. Who is thee that they speak of, that the scripture is speaking of, is Yahweh Yahweh Shai. And it says, To know thee is perfect righteousness. Yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. The root of immortality. To be able to put off the corruptible and put on the incorruptible. The incorruptible is immortality. To live forever, Akim, with Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. We're gonna stay in Wisdom of Solomon. We're gonna go back all the way to the first chapter and look at the fifth verse. It says, For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So if you're not looking to the hills from which come your help and you continue to trust in oppression and follow after the ways of this world, conducting yourselves in a manner in which is not acceptable to Yahweh Yahweh Shai, which he calls an abomination, then the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee. He will not be with you because you are being deceitful. You're saying one thing and you're doing a whole nother. Same thing as straddling the fence. Your mind is not made up. You're like a wave tossed to and fro. Let's go to Ephesians 6, chapter 10 and 12 verse. Ephesians 6 chapter, the 10th through the 12th verse. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And when you're being strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you're not like waves tossed to and fro. You're not being deceitful. You're standing on the word of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the wiles of the devil are these vain philosophies and different off doctrines that are being taught here in America, which America means bitter and which is also known as Babylon, which we're being held captive in currently. Land of confusion. So in order to not be deceitful, you want <clears throat> to... So lock it. Put on the whole arm of Yahweh that ye be so lock it, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He goes on to say in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And those spiritual and that spiritual wickedness in high places comes from the rulers of the darkness of this world. You build the birds and you do punts, so on and thus forth. You build Gates, your Elon Musk's. This is where these principalities come from. And so it will behoove you, Akim and you feel Akwa, to put on the whole armor so that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're going to go to Psalms 17 and 8. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. You want Yahweh Yahweh Shai to conceal you. You want him to keep you hidden. And the only way that Yahweh Yahweh Shai is able to keep you hidden the only way Yahweh Yahweh Shai is able to keep you concealed is by you 
doing what thus says Yahweh why Yahweh shy. Not leading unto your own understanding. Not feeling like you got this whole world figured out. Not you, what they call when you're coming up as a young man, 17, 18, when you feel like you know what's going on, you, you're smelling yourself. No. But you look unto these scriptures for advice. You look unto the elders who, who've given you this knowledge, this wisdom, and this understanding from Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, starting from his father, Yahweh, starting off with Elder Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle Rakar, Elder Apostle Gabar, Elder Apostle Ramlov, and so on and thus forth, all the way down to the least of these in Great Millstone. From Psalm 17 and 8, I want to go to Proverbs 38 and 9. That's Proverbs 30th chapter, the 8th and the 9th verse. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Least I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is Yahweh? Or least I be poor and still, and take the name of my power in vain. And this is why you're not wanting to lean into your own understanding. This is why you look to the hills from which come cometh your strength. So that Yahweh, Yahweh Shai can remove far from you vanity and lies, and give you neither poverty nor riches, and only give you food that's convenient for you. Something that you can deal with, something that's practical, something that's reasonable. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is reasonable. The ways of this world are confusing. They're confounding. They leave you stressed out. They leave you tired and, and, and weary. But when it comes to Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, you get strength. You get rejuvenated. You get refreshed. You become new. And this is what Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is able to provide unto you. Stability. Safety. Secureness. Salvation. Redemption. <laughs> Let's go to Psalms 27. Psalms 27, a Psalm of David. Yeah, Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should arise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of Yahweh that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Yahweh and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me, hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto Yahweh. Hear, O Yahweh, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Yahweh, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O power of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahweh will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Yahweh, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of Yahweh in the land of the living. Wait on Yahweh. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on Yahweh. And this is what assurance and reassurance that we have, Aki and Yufu Akwa, that Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, will neither sleep nor slumber. But every word that proceeds out of his mouth will come to pass, shall come to pass, has come to pass. 
And we have to believe that. And we have to continue to stand on that. Being fitted with the full armor of Yahweh, while Yahweh shy. Waiting patiently for him to do exactly what he says he will do. Let's look at Proverbs 3rd chapter 5th and 6th verse. Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. He's going to direct our paths, Akim, as long as we acknowledge him. As long as we lean not unto our own understanding. Proverbs 3 and 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. So everything that the world teaches you that is contrary to the will of Yahweh while Yahweh shy, that is what you must shy away from. That is what you must turn your back on. I'm going to stay in Proverbs, the third chapter. We're going to go down to the 11th and the 12th verse. It says, Proverbs 3 and 11, My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh, neither be weary of his correction. For whom Yahweh loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Yahweh, why Yahweh shall delighteth in us when we follow after his law, statutes, and commandments. And in order to follow after Yahweh, why Yahweh shall's law, statutes, and commandments, it comes times in our lives that we have to be corrected. It comes times in our lives that we need to be disciplined. And that discipline comes with not sparing the rod. He have to put, he have to put that whooping on us. Because sometimes we, we, we want to lean into our own understanding. We want to listen to the carnal man and not the spiritual. So it says, despise not the chastening, Salakia, Proverbs 3 and 11. My son, he calls you his son. My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh, neither be weary of his correction. I'll give you a perfect example right here in Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. Who is the him he's speaking of? Yahweh Shai, none other. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. His sins as well as our sins, Akim. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. The pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in Yahweh Shai's hand. Because he was bruised. He was bruised through discipline, through correction, through chastening. And now the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. And that is what's taking place right now as I speak, Akim and Yufu Akwa. Let's look at 2 Samuel 22nd chapter. The first verse says, And David spake unto Yahweh the words of this song. In the day that Yahweh had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. Sounds like to me that David was look, looking to the hills from which come his strength. Second Samuel 22 and 2 says, And he said, Yahweh is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The power of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou saveth me from violence. Look down here to the 18th verse in 2 Samuel 22. It says, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. And this, these principalities these this wickedness in high places is too strong for us Akim. We, we we can't do it by our own selves we have to look to the hills from which come if our strength follow me if you will i want to go back to that wisdom of solomon one and five and I said, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. And so 
the precept that I had to follow up on that was the Proverbs, the ninth chapter and the 10th verse. And it says, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And that is the way in which you can keep a steady path. Keep your eyes set on the prize, which is salvation, which is being in the kingdom with Yahweh while Yahweh shy. The way in which you will not follow after deceitful things. The way in which you will be able to continue to keep constant discipline. The way in which you will continue to be, can continue to be righteous and gain more understanding. From there, I want to go to Revelations 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Believe me, I can you feel like why it's coming. Those who continue to deal deceitfully with Yahweh, while Yahweh shy, you don't have to worry about him keeping the word of his patience and keeping and keeping you either. Because those trials that are ahead, you will not be saved out of. Because you didn't keep the word of, of his patience. Let's go to Jeremiah 6 and 16. Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. And this goes out to those two thirds who won't look to the hills from which cometh their strength, who continue to excel in deceitfulness, thinking that Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai can't see them because what they're doing is in the dark or what they're doing is behind closed doors. Everything is being accounted for. Everything is being jotted down. Nothing, nothing, nothing is being hid. So it says in the middle passage, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. The good way, the old path. You, you search for it diligently here in the scriptures, in the Bible. We listen to what thus says the Bible. Coming from Yahweh, which he's given it to Yahweh Shahamashiach, who comes in the volume of the book. Let's look at Revelation, Revelations 2 and 25. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. That which you have already hold fast till I come. Those things that are good, those things that are pure, whatever things that are right, those things that are just, those are the things that you are to hold on to. And those things that are pure, those things that are right and just are found within this Bible. You are being taught from the Bible. You are to come out of her, my people, come out of this world, come out of these vain philosophies, these cunningly devised fables and do away with them. For they do not lead to life, but they lead down to death. I'm going to go to Hebrews 2 and 23. Hebrews, the second chapter. Salakia. Hebrews, the 10th chapter and the 23rd verse. <laughs> Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised to keep us safe and secure in his arms. He's faithful to do exactly what he said and what I brought out in Revelations 3 and 10. We're going to go back to Revelations. We're going to go down to the 11th verse, Revelations 3 and 11. And it says, 
Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And this is what we are running this race for. This is why we're striving for the mastery, to receive that crown, that salvation, which, which I continue to speak of, and all the other Akim who push this truth across the four winds to the best of their ability and sincerity and charity. Immortality, which is putting on the incorruptible and taking off this corruptible, which is this flesh, which is the change of darkness that we're in, which we've been put in, placed in, punished because of what we've done. Now, knowing that what you've done is wrong, turn back away from what you've done and seek Yahweh while Yahweh is shy. It says that in the word. Seek him 10 times more. Let, let's, let's go ahead and get it. You'll find that in the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter and the 28th verse. For as it was your mind to go astray from Yahweh, so being returned, seek him 10 times more. And that is what the men of Great Millstone, starting with the elder apostle Tahar, all the way down to the least of us, is telling two thirds of our people and bidding the others who are the hopefully elect into this marriage to return and seek Yahweh while Yahweh shy 10 times more. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1 and 13. Hold fast the form of sound words. Those sound words come from the Bible, coming from Yahweh ultimately, but which was handed down, which is the blueprint to Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who comes in the volume of the book. The volume of the book. That means the whole book, the Old and the New Testament. Let me repeat that. The Old and the New Testament. It says, hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, and faith and love, which is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, which I stated earlier comes in the volume of the book. Let's look at Psalms 145 and 20. Yahweh preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. Self-explanatory. Those who love Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, will keep his commandments. In the, in the middle passage, it says, but all the wicked will he just destroy. And the wicked are the ones, obviously, who are not following or abiding after Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai's laws, his statutes, nor his commandments. They continue to seek and do as they please foolishly. Nothing but folly. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is working a beautiful work within us, Akim. As long as we continue to look to the hills from which cometh our strength. As long as we continue to follow after Yahweh, Yahweh Shai's laws, statutes, and commandments. And take not our hand away from the plow. This is what's promised to us. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is not a man that he should lie. From there, let's go to 2 Ezra 9, 7, and 8. 2 Ezra is the ninth chapter, the seventh and the eighth verse. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land. And within my borders, for I have sanctified them from the big so like if I have sanctified them for me from the beginning, as I stated earlier in Jeremiah one and five, I knew thee before you were in the womb, sanctified salvation. 
preserved from said perils, as it expressly states in the beginning of 2 Ezra 9 and 8. Because of your works and because of your faith. As we know, faith without works is dead. But it ultimately ends with faith. And because you have faith, the men uh, are out here on the highways and hedges proclaiming the acceptable year of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Bidding those to the marriage, bringing out those three important lyrics. Fear Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Don't take the karagma. And what happens if you do take the karagma, which is the third lyric? You will be burned, incinerated by thermonuclear fire. Let's go to Romans 12 and 11. So like it, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. I, I spoke of this earlier. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is only dealing with reasonableness, not folly, not foolishness, not scoffers, not those who think that they know better. But we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. This is what's reasonable. This is what is acceptable unto Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. Nothing else. Let's go to Revelations 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth. This is acceptable. This is reasonable. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. The prophecy is filled in the book. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. It's letting you know right here. The time is at hand. The time is drawing nigh. When those things will begin to be, be, be upon the earth. And if you don't have faith, if you don't have works, then you can hang it up. It's going to be read them and weep. As they say in the world, curtains for you. <laughs> Let's go to 2 Ezra 16, 74 through 78. It's 2 Ezra 16, the 74 through the 78 verse. And it says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith Yahweh, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord power. Let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. And this goes back to Yahweh, Yahweh Shah destroying the wicked for their iniquities, which is sin on top of sin, 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 on top of sin. On top of sin. Iniquities. It is left undressed in 2nd Ezra 16 and, 17, 7, 16 and 78. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes 27 and 9. The book of, also known as the book of Sirach. Ecclesiastes 27 and 9 says, The birds will resort unto their like. So will truth return unto them that practice in her. And that's very telling in the latter part of this passage. It says, so will truth return unto them that practice in her. So you're not going to be able to just sit on your butt. Call yourself eating snacks all day. Popcorn and cotton candies. You got to put in the work. Elder Apostle Ramlaw said, what you put into it, you will get out of it. 
So if you're not putting any, in, anything into it, don't worry about getting anything out of it except for death and destruction, famine, mourning, woes, 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 and pestilences. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and 7. Isaiah 55 and 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and to our power for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 9 says, skip around a little bit, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Verse 11 says, So shall